As they load her into the cop car, Respucia says, Augustus, baby, get mama some KFC. <laughs> it's finger licking good. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science. Go ahead, look it up. Thanks so much. You thought Moby Vic was over, didn't you? I mean, she is in jail, so essentially that part of the tale is over. But there's some short little one-off stories that OP wrote. They feature some of our favorite characters, and I thought it would behoove me to run through those before we officially consider this series wrap. We've got plenty of favorites returning, like Mr. Sir, there's a double date with Renegade Robbie, and I'm quite looking forward to it, so let's explore these together, shall we? Uh, we'll get into it. Snarky Mark and the Chunky Bunch. Here's a story of a fatty lady, and she ate up so very many pies. That's how she became the Chunky Bunch, the Chunky Bunch, <laughs> the Chunky Bunch. Uh, oh, why, hello there. Hi, deleted OP. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a week. <laughs> I have not had another ham encounter. Thank be this. But everyone's favorite Snarkopus was not so lucky. I had lunch with Mark today, and he told me this story. I am doing my civic duty and relaying to you what he told me. Ah, oh, secondhand store. I guess we take what we can get. <laughs> it's fine. The characters: Snarky Mark, 30 years old, married father of the most adorable five-year-old boy, also professional shitlord. Hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> Respucia, estimated around 50 years old, five foot six and 280 pounds. Augustus Gloop. Estimated around 25 years old, son of Respucia, still lives at home, around 5 foot 8 and 350 pounds. Yeah, that's a big boy. Still can't hold a candle to Moby Vic, though. You need to get those numbers up, son. You need to eat so you can be healthy. <laughs> Without further ado, Snarky Mark works in finance. Occasionally, the company he works for will put on seminars in low-income areas to help people of a lower socioeconomic class learn how to do a basic budget, etc. Honestly, that's a really good idea. I like that a lot. This last weekend, Mark had to give the seminar, so Mark sets up the room, lays out water bottles and pens and papers at each seat, and he is ready to give this seminar. 11 a.m., people begin trickling in. Snarky Mark, take any seat. We'll be starting in just a few moments. All is going well until Respucia. Hey, where the snacks be at is? What the f did you just say? Be at is. When you're not sure what the proper word to use is, just use them all. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I think the proper sentence is, where is the snacks be at? Duh. <laughs> Snarky Mark tries to compute this new form of English. Snarky Mark. Uh. We don't have snacks. You can take any available seat, though. Be careful, she's gonna try and eat the seat. <laughs> Snarky Mark then makes a quick exit to avoid any further interaction. Respucia and Augustus Gloop lumber towards two available seats. Snarky Mark, All right, today we're going to be going over basic budgeting. First, Respucia, I was told there would be refreshments. Snarky Mark, Sorry, no snacks. However, we are providing a lunch later. Respucia, you should at least have drinks. Uh, I'm thirsty. Snarky Mark, the waters in front of you are yours to drink. Respucia, I said I'm thirsty. I don't want no water. I need a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> it's only going to make you more thirsty. You realize that, right? And Mark says as much. Actually, Pepsi dehydrates you. Water is best if you are thirsty. Please do not engage with fat logic, Mark. I mean, do we have the power to kick them out? Have them removed? This is a disruption. You're not here to budget. You're here for a free meal. Someone call security. <laughs> Respucia says, Are you a doctor, pretty boy? <laughs> I didn't think so. You don't know that shit. Snarky Mark. Ma'am, I need you to stop. I'll be forced to kick you out if you talk like that again. There we go, there we go! Me and Mark, we operate on the same wavelength, that's beautiful. Respucia did pipe down for a while, and Snarky Mark continued his financial talk. 
An hour or so passes, Mark starts creating a mock household budget. Augustus Gloop, It's lunch. Snarky Mark, One o'clock. Augustus Gloop, What? Then he turns to Respucia, Bye! I'm hungry! <laughs> Classic. Respucia, You heard him! My baby hungry! This is the best I can do to describe the way that Mark said she pronounced the word hungry. Han gri. <laughs> Snarky Mark, lunch is in one hour. Let's get back to Augustus Gloop. Hey, what are we having? Snarky Mark, restaurant X is catering. We are? Damn, well, thank you for choosing Red X Industries for your catering needs. <laughs> the menu was grilled chicken and salad. Augustus Gloop, hey, that isn't real food. Bah, I'm starving. Respucia, yeah, my baby hungry. He can't live on no rabbit food. I didn't pay for that shit. Wait, are we paying for the budgeting meeting? I thought this was just, you know, volunteer work or something. Whatever, everybody wants a slice, you know how it is. Snark mode is now engaged, and Snarky Mark says, First off, you didn't pay for anything! We do this for free! Oh, see? <laughs> Second, your baby is a 25-year-old man! And then he says to Augustus Gloop, What is wrong with you? You're complaining to mommy that you're hungry like some kind of overgrown toddler! Grow up! And believe me, you're not starving. You wouldn't starve to death if you went a week without food, much less an hour. Augustus Gloop then begins to sniffle. <laughs> Last of all, I told you if you disrupted this class again, I'd kick you out. This is me kicking you out. Respucia, you can't talk to my baby like that. He's five times the man that you are. Snarky Mark, five times the size, maybe. Oh yes, this has gone off the rails. This has devolved beautifully. <laughs> Respucia is not amused, of course. Now she mad. Snarky Mark, now leave before I make you leave. Snarky Mark overestimated his own ham-slaying prowess. Respucia launches herself at Mark. Snarky Mark uses dodge. It's not very effective. Oh yeah, get out of there. Uh-oh, big boy pancaked you. Look at that right there. Oh, there's no escape. There's no escape. It's all over now. <laughs> Uh, you, you can punch him in the head, but it's all padded. That's a pretty good gif. <laughs> Mark is taken down indeed by the beast. Respucia, I teach you to talk to my sweet boy like that. Snarky Mark, get the fuck off of me. Security guards have already converged and have removed Respucia's corpulent body from Mark's. Yeah, shout out security. <laughs> Guards escort her out while she is screaming obscenities. As they load her into the cop car, Respucia says, Augustus, baby, give mama some KFC. <laughs> it's finger looking good. Uh, yeah, gotta keep your priorities in order, I guess. Snuggy Mark finished the seminar. Augustus waddled off into the sunset. He was never heard from again. Some say he found that promised land of fried chicken. Some say he found a gym membership. The truth? Only Augustus knows. Mark has told his company that he's never doing one of these goddamn seminars again. And so went the story of Snarky Mark and the Chunky Bunch. TLDR, an angry ham is quicker than Mark anticipates. Quicker than any of us anticipated if we're being completely honest. I don't understand the whole KFC thing. Is she confused? She think Colonel Sanders is, is also a lawyer? No, I may be just a humble Southern lawyer, but would you like to taste some of my secret herbs and spices? <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell's going on here, but enjoyable story. Uh, we'll move on into the next one, in which we bring back a true fan favorite. Mr. Sir and the Forgotten Ham. Oh, he's back. He's really back. I know the crowd is erupting with applause right now, so I'll give it a minute to die down. <laughs> uh, so, I finally came clean to my friends and family about my secret internet life. Posting stories about fat people. <laughs> like the shitlords they are, they've begun telling me their own stories of hams, and they have promised to keep me updated on all hammy encounters to feed your beatus. This story comes from Bro1. 
heretofore referred to as Tristan, for that is how he is referred to in real life. As a side note, I truly believe my parents were attempting to give my brothers and I names that will never be spelled right at Starbucks. A slow burn troll, so to speak. Me pay for $7 for a lot to eat trolling yourself at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't live your life for you, it's fine. Uh, the characters! Tristan, who is 12 years old at this point, relatively athletic middle schooler, already an awesome big brother, kind of a dick to fat kids, because middle school, you know. <laughs> yeah, and some people never grow out of it. <laughs> Mr. Sir, patron saint of shitlords, my spirit animal, the badass Russian slayer of hams, Big Timmy, 12 years old, about 5 foot 1 and 150 pounds. Yeah, he's carrying around a little extra. He'll make a hell of a defensive lineman, though. <laughs> <laughs> so let us begin. I shall now regale you with the first confirmed story where Mr. Sir grappled with a ham. Our tale takes place in 1996. No diggity had just been released. <laughs> I like the way you work, kid. No diggity. I thought to bag it up. Bag it up. Uh, I was three years old. Vic was just a type of vapor rub. Tristan was 12 and in middle school. He had Jim with everyone's favorite ham slayer, Mr. Sir. I guess OP didn't meet Vic for another like two years or so. It was the first day of school and Tristan is in the gym with his friends and Big Timmy. Mr. Sir, welcome to gym class. I am Mr. Sir, I'm the gym coach. In gym, we do not play games. You are no longer children. We learn about healthy food. We run and do calisthenics. I do not tolerate whining. And I do not tolerate excuses. With these words, Mr. Sir had already unwittingly made himself an enemy in Big Timmy. Small scuffles ensued. Mr. Sir, today we do wind sprints on my whistle. Begin! The kids take off running, doing their sprints. After two rounds, Big Timmy stops. Big Timmy, I, I can't do anymore. Mr. Sir, if you have the breath to complain, you have the breath to run. Now run! <laughs> Big Timmy, no, running hurts my knees. Yeah, shin splints don't, you know, <laughs> Mr. Sir. It is not the running, but the extra weight you carry that hurts your knees. Now go! You could definitely do this type of stuff in 1996. In in year 2020 plus, yeah, Mr. Sir is going to be fired real quick. Protective mommies and daddies coming down to fight the teachers on behalf of their little boys and girls, right? I think that's a crying shame. <laughs> Big Timmy does start running again. He does one more sprint and then stops. Big Timmy, I, I can't do anymore. Please, Mr. Sir, you can. You just choose not to. You choose laziness and gluttony over the hard work to make your body perform the way that it should. I cannot make you do anything outside of gym, but in my class, you will work hard. Now run with your classmates. <laughs> God damn, I love Mr. Sir. I've missed him so much. It's not quite the verbal joust that he has with Vic. Because again, Big Timmy's 12. 12 year olds generally do what the grown ups tell them. I think when Vic had these interactions, she had like the hormones flowing through her and stuff. It got a little out of hand, but I'm still enjoying whatever the hell this is. <laughs> the rest of the entire interaction went along those lines. For many weeks, there was standard fat logic versus Mr. Sir. Many laps were run until the day of the presidential fitness test. Mr. Sir, Today we begin our presidential fitness testing. I have posted the requirements on the wall. I expect each and every one of you to receive the award. Big Timmy. What? These tests aren't fair. I'm supposed to do seven pull-ups? Everyone's made differently. It's my genetics. Tristan. There's no fat gene, idiot. Mr. Sir. Tristan. You obviously have too much energy if you can insult your classmate. 50 push-ups should help to remedy that. And Tristan begins doing the push-ups. Timmy, that is not true. And I expect you to put forth an effort to meet these goals the same as your classmates. 
Big Timmy. But they're different for me. It's not fair, I... Mr. Sir, another word and you will run until you cannot speak. <laughs> uh, see, Mr. Sir, harsh but fair. He's trying to explain his way of thinking. You know, his actual logic, but indeed, fat logic gets in the way. <laughs> this silence is Big Timmy. And the presidential fitness testing continues throughout the week. Big Timmy complains all the way through it. The day of the mile run came, and the kids walked outside to the track. Mr. Sir, all right, you will run eight laps, and that makes one mile. Each lap you run, you will collect a popsicle stick from me. When you finish, I will count the sticks and make sure there are eight. There will be no cheating. You lost a stick? Oh, you just won yourself an extra lap. On my whistle, begin! <laughs> the kids run the track. Tristan finishes in about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. The other kids are done by 9 minutes, except for Big Timmy. Yeah, 9 minutes is like a very slow speed walk. You have to actively try to go slower than that. <laughs> the kids begin to laugh at Big Timmy, and Tristan calls out, Come on, fat ass! <laughs> Mr. Sir, Tristan! Since you have the breath to be cruel to your classmate running as quickly as he can, you get to start doing some wind sprints in a show of solidarity. You run them until Timmy is done running, and don't you dare half-ass it. And with that, Tristan began doing his sprints. It took Big Timmy 20 more minutes to finish his mile. <laughs> Tristan was no longer able to make mean comments after 20 minutes of non-stop wind sprints. Mr. Sir says, I'm proud of you, Timmy. You ran the mile. You didn't stop. See? You, you can do things, Big Timmy. But now I hurt all over and I'm dizzy. I don't think I'm gonna puke, Mr. Sir. That is good pain. That pain is your weakness, leaving the body. <laughs> uh, yes. I love how he's actually like sort of being nurturing to this kid. He doesn't see him as like a completely lost cause because he doesn't talk back. He's like, I can whip you into shape. You're doing the best that you can do and I appreciate that. It's, it's beautiful, honestly. The next day was dedicated to sit-ups and discussing healthy eating habits and how they contribute to maintaining a healthy weight. Big Timmy, you're wrong. Some people eat healthy and are still big. I eat healthy and so does my family. All of us are just bigger. Tristan, not sure your definition of healthy is. I saw your lunch. Tristan told me Timmy used to knock out a huge sub which he said was loaded with like 10 mayo packets, chips, a cookie, and a 20 ounce soda for lunch. He would then snack on oatmeal cream pies or chips from the vending machine throughout the day. Mr. Sir, silence Tristan. It is both quality and quantity. If you eat 6,000 calories of lettuce, you will gain weight. You must find the balance, but there is no one who is naturally fed. Everyone can be healthy. They just need to want it. And to add on to that, wanting it is not enough. <laughs> You've got to want it enough to put it into action. Big Timmy has no rebuttal for any of this. Then the day of the pull-ups came. Tristan knocked out his required seven. Everyone in the class went and did at least one. Big Timmy jumped up, jumped and fell, jumped again, and once again his hand slid off the bar. He couldn't even hold his own weight on the bar. A zero was written on his sheet. After class, Tristan overheard this conversation in the locker room. Big Timmy, Mr. Sir, is it true that you think I could be able to do all these things? Mr. Sir, there is nothing that says you cannot achieve these goals, Timothy. Everyone can be fit. There are only those who will work for it and those who would rather blame everyone but themselves. Which one are you? Big Timmy, uh, I, I don't know how to, though, Mr. Sir. I do. And after that, Big Timmy began paying attention in class, giving his all during the exercises. He paid attention to what he ate, trading in sodas for water, fruits and veggies for snacks instead of chips, etc. He started talking to Tristan, and they started working out. And eventually Tristan invited Big Timmy to play football with him and his friends. 
Like I said, a hell of a defensive lineman. <laughs> Tristan and Big Timmy, despite rocky beginnings, became good friends. God damn, I love this. This is such a good story, isn't it? It's the future that everybody hoped for Moby Vic. It's not easy to transform yourself in such a way, but you, you always have the free will to make it happen. And Big Timmy did. And that puts a huge smile on my face. There were a few relapses of fat logic, but by eighth grade, Big Timmy was gone. He had evolved into Tiny Tim. He was now friends with my brother. By 11th grade, he was six foot one, about 190 pounds of muscle, and the starting wide receiver on the varsity football team. He was Big Timmy again, but a different type of big. <laughs> this is how I remembered him, huge, and he used to pick me up and carry me around whenever I was with my brother. I love Timmy. Yes, it's true. He made it! To be honest, he was only mildly hammy at his worst, but when Tristan told me that Timmy used to be fat before I knew him, I knew that I had to share it with all of you. And when I heard that Mr. Sir had struck down his fat logic single-handedly, I knew that you would all rejoice. The story itself is not that funny or exciting, but it's Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Sir won, fatties zero. TLDR, Mr. Sir defeats fat logic and douchey middle school behavior. Big Timmy made it. I wonder how many kids Mr. Sir saved from a, a similar fate. And then he saw Moby Vic, he's like, I've saved kids like this before, I can do it again. But he had never met Moby Vic before. He had never met somebody so determined to fail. But I'm glad that wasn't Big Timmy. Now he's beefy, Timmy. How are you liking the look of that? Touch my bicep, go ahead, do it. <laughs> uh, uh, I love it. The happy ending that we all hope for. And now, let's get on into the next story where another fan favorite is returning, and that is Renegade Robbie. Renegade Robbie, the double date disaster. Oh yeah, that should go really well. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why, hello there, lovely ones. Have you lost weight? Yeah, but only because I had a really big shit this morning. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> Uh, last night, Mike, Robbie, and I were having a lovely roommate dinner before watching Game of Thrones. Before dinner, Robbie dropped this bomb on us about his Saturday night. After hearing it, I knew that I had to regale you all. I have nothing else to do at work today, so uh, buckle up. The characters, Renegade Robbie, the Grand Meister of witty comebacks, my best friend in the whole world, 21 years old, a pure awesome, the smartest guy I know, dating Claire Bear. Claire Bear, 21, Spiffy Griffy, 21, friend of Renegade Robbie, about six foot, 180, and then there's Vanessa Ham, a friend of Claire Bear, estimated at about 5'2 and 228 pounds. Robbie chose this picture for reference. That's not the biggest girl I ever seen, but that's a big girl. Alrighty then, let us begin the tale of Robbie and the ham. Robbie and Claire Bear had been dating for around six months at this point. The two of them decided that they were going to escape from the massive amounts of studying that they were doing for final exams and go on a date. That's cool, you know, go out, have fun, be young, be sexy. A few days before the date, Claire Bear says, Robbie, about our date this Saturday, Renegade Robbie. What about it? Claire Bear, do you think we could make it a double? Renegade Robbie, with who? Claire Bear, my friend Vanessa Sam. I told her about our date and she really wants to come. She hasn't gone out in a while, so can she come? Renegade Robbie, I don't remember her, but yeah, sure. Uh, who's she dating? Claire Bear, great. Well, she broke up with her boyfriend a few months ago, and she's been single ever since. Could you set her up with one of your friends? Renegade Robbie, what? No, I don't have time to set up your friends. Claire Bear, please. She's really, really sweet. She just needs to get back out there is all. I hope beyond hope that that's not true, because I'm not going to sit here and make fun of a nice fat person, okay? Eh, who am I kidding? I would. <laughs> Just not as brutally as I'd make fun of a mean fat person. <laughs> uh, so the begging goes on for a while. Finally, Robbie relents and said, Okay, I'll find someone for the date. 
Claire Bear told him to make sure he picks one of his good friends. As an aside, she isn't the biggest fan of Mike and I. We get along with her okay, but she thinks Robbie is too smart, good, etc. to have friends like us. I believe her exact words were, it's time to trade up. I don't think Claire Bear views other people as humans. <laughs> They're all just fashion accessories for her. I don't want to be friends unless you make me look good or can offer me something. And Robbie going to school for, what was it, like biochemical engineering or something? Yeah, he can obviously offer something to Claire, but what does she bring to the table? Huh, I'm becoming not a fan very quickly. <laughs> uh, Claire wanted to make sure that Robbie didn't choose someone like us for the date. So let's fast forward to Saturday, the day of the date. After extensive Facebook stalking, Robbie had concluded that Vanessa Ham wasn't fat. She was a cute, average-sized girl in all her pictures, concluding that there was no danger. Oh, Robbie, you poor sweet summer child. He convinced Spiffy Griffy to go on the date. Yeah, we all had to learn a harsh lesson about MySpace angles, didn't we? <laughs> Claire Bear told Robbie that she and Vanessa Ham would meet him and Spiffy Griffy at the restaurant. The gentlemen arrive at the restaurant on time, looking all handsome. They grab a table and wait for the ladies to arrive. Finally, in walks Claire Bear and, oh, that's, um, that's Vanessa Ham. She looks about a hundred pounds heavier than in the pictures. That feel when... Oh no. <laughs> the girls walk and um, waddle over Claire Bear. Hi, Robbie, Spiffy Griffy. This is my friend, Vanessa Ham. Vanessa Ham. Tee hee! Hi! I was so excited when Claire told me you wanted to go on a date with me! Spiffy Griffy. Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry. I'm just surprised. Oh, you look. Different in person, Vanessa Ham. Oh, yeah. My Facebook pictures are old. Yeah, really old. How many Twinkies has it been between then and now? <laughs> oh, did I say Twinkie? I meant time. How much time has it been? Shit. <laughs> Robbie and Spiffy Griffy say they're going to tell the waiter the rest of their party has arrived. They begin a hushed discussion. The basic gist of that discussion is that neither of them knew that she was fat she didn't technically lie, etc. Griffy says he'll stay and finish the date with her, and they just won't ever have a second one. <laughs> Griff is a good guy like that. I mean, yeah, I guess that's good guy stuff. You're sort of misleading her in a way, but I think seeing her and walking out like, fuck that, is, is the much more evil option. <laughs> Uh, so they return to the table, where Vanessa Ham has already acquainted herself with the breadsticks. <laughs> they sit down and begin some normal date conversation. Griffy's feelings at this point. I'm gonna need a lot of booze to handle this shit. <laughs> uh, just don't drink too much, or at a certain point you might be like, you know what, fuck it. Yeah, let's go home together, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, they talk about school and how much stuff they have to do before exams, etc. Finally, Claire Bear says, Vanessa Ham, why don't you tell Robbie and Griffy a bit about yourselves? Vanessa Ham, well, I just transferred here this year from College X in New York. That's right, College X. It's the Red X Industries experience, but it's school. Tuitions are high, but hey, we'll print your name on a piece of paper. What do you want from me? <laughs> That's why she transferred. <laughs> uh, Renegade Robbie said, oh, cool. Uh, Alistair's brother went there. Did you, Claire Bear, can we not talk about Alistair, Vanessa Ham? Who's he? Renegade Robbie, she's my friend. We've known each other since we were five. She has an older brother who went to College X. He liked it. Why'd you end up transferring? Claire Bear can't handle a mention of Alistair even in passing. <laughs> it's really strange. The conversation continues and a waiter comes up to take orders. Vanessa Ham. Okay, I'll have the fried calamari for an appetizer and then the Caesar salad. And for dinner, uh, fettuccine Alfredo. The waiter. Yes, of course. And to drink, Vanessa Ham. Oh, I'll have a diet Pepsi. 
Of course. Why even ask? Ah, I'm on a diet! Yeah, then probably you shouldn't eat the deep-fried squid or the fettuccine Alfredo. And she's already sitting there smashing baskets of breadsticks. God damn. Renegade Robbie says, A diet? Really? <laughs> Claire Bear hits Robbie and says, Shut up! Renegade Robbie, What? I'm just saying, if she's on a diet, eating like that isn't gonna help. Are you really trying to diet, Vanessa Ham? Vanessa Ham? Tee hee! Yeah! I'm not trying to lose my curves, though! Don't worry! I'm just trying to tone up a bit! Okay, well, toning usually involves slimming. What you're doing is, is bulking. She's not even gonna cut later. <laughs> she's just bulking and bulking until they gotta bury her inside of a piano box. Renegade Robbie ignores the curves comment to each their own and all that. Uh, that's good. You mind if I give a little advice? Vanessa Ham? No, what? Renegade Robbie? Well, weight loss will go a lot faster if you don't eat as much. Vanessa Ham? Oh, that's not true. I tried the old diet thing. I went into starvation mode and didn't lose a pound. You have to keep up your metabolism and give yourself enough energy to exercise. You can't starve yourself skinny. Part of that is true. What sort of exercises do you do, just out of curiosity? <laughs> uh, Spiffy Griffy pipes up and says, oh, I feel like that's wrong. I mean, like, look at kids in Africa or whatever, you know? Oh, <laughs> Claire Bear. Oh my god, you, you guys, stop attacking her! <laughs> but hey, I'm just a normal kid, like you, except that I ask questions. Uh, Jesus. I understand Robbie's dating her, but I don't understand why. She's insufferable. <laughs> Renegade Robbie says, we're not attacking her, we're just helping. Vanessa Ham? Yeah, I'm just helping them understand weight loss. The kids in Africa have a different type of genetics than me. They're meant to be skinny. Some girls are like that too. I'm more Nordic though. We're built more sturdy. That's why I started gaining weight last year. Just filling out my natural body shape. Their reaction when? The Lord is testing me right now. Renegade Robbie and Spiffy Griffy just let the conversation end there. Yeah, you don't want to ruin this completely horrible date. <laughs> they assume that Vanessa Ham was a nice, if not somewhat misinformed girl. Dinner came, nobody could finish their portions except for Vanessa Ham. She made quick work of her smorgasbord. After everyone was done and the bill was paid, they decided to take a walk. Vanessa Ham, oh goody, I can work off that dinner and make room for dessert. <laughs> okay. uh, a walk is not gonna do it. A full on run only burns like 10 calories per minute or something crazy like that. <laughs> uh, oh my God. So they begin their walk. Robbie and Claire ended up a bit in front of Vanessa Ham and Griffey. Suddenly Vanessa Ham says, what? Uh-oh, trouble in paradise. Spiffy Griffy, oh, no, you're really nice. You're just not exactly my type. Oh, Vanessa Ham, what's that supposed to mean? Are you calling me fat? Robbie and Claire have come over at this point. Claire Bear, Vanessa Ham, you're nowhere near fat. Renegade Robbie, not as under his breath as he intended. Nowhere near? <laughs> okay. Claire Bear overheard this and begins whisper lecturing him about being mean. Spiffy Griffy, oh no, I'm not calling you fat. You're just not the type of girl I'm attracted to. Oh, everyone has preferences, you know? Vanessa Ham, and what are your preferences? Spiffy Griffy, I like huh, petite girls. <laughs> Spiffy Griffy, doing an impressive dance around the issue. Vanessa Ham then bursts into tears. He, you sound just like my ex. He broke up with me. He called me fat just because I gained a little bit of solid weight. Yeah, 100 pounds of solid weight. <laughs> Spiffy Griffy, well, that's like a shitty thing to say, but... Huh. 
Claire Bear. Seriously, Griffy, how could you say that to her? Spiffy Griffy, oh, I didn't call her fat. I just told her I'm not interested in dating. Vanessa Ham, I can't help it. It's my genes. My ancestors were solid. I'm just filling out. And all these boys call me fat when I'm not. I'm just thick. Yeah, extra thick. And some dudes ain't even into girls when they're normal thick. I'm with Griffy on this one. Petite women all the way. <laughs> Claire Bear, I know. I I'm sorry. They're just jerks. You're perfect, just as you are. Renegade Robbie? No, he said he doesn't want to date her. Not that she couldn't ever get a date. Since when is not being attracted to someone the same thing as being a jerk? Vanessa Ham? I've been through so much. Why can't I find a nice guy? You wanna know why? Cause you're springing the MySpace angles on him, that's why. <laughs> just be upfront about who you are and how you look. Renegade Robbie, getting just a little bit pissy now. I don't care about your life. <laughs> Never find a nice guy. Seriously? Griffy was nice enough to stay for the date, even after you showed up 100 pounds heavier than all your pictures. Nice enough that he's trying to let you down discreetly. Jesus! Claire Bear, don't you talk to her like that. She can't help it. <laughs> uh... You are just as deluded as your friend. Get both of these chicks out of here. <laughs> Vanessa Ham. Yeah, I I'm so sick of being turned down for just eating like a normal person and not starving myself. Hot guys only date those twigs because it's what society has brainwashed them into thinking is attractive. I deserve a guy just as hot as the one those twigs date. Okay, but both the hot guys and the twigs are, are putting in some work to look the way that they look, right? What sort of work have you put in? Nothing. Nothing at all. You you just feel entitled to another person. You're disgusting. Not quite Moby Vic 2.0, but <laughs> you're, you're headed that way. Spiffy Griffy is doing his best to camouflage himself into the darkness, trying to avoid being dragged into this. Renegade Robbie. So, you're entitled to someone that you find attractive, but guys aren't entitled to being with someone they find attractive? Vanessa Ham, yes! I'm so much more attractive than those girls! I'm nice and funny, and they're all bitches! Why can't guys see beyond my thicker frame? Curves are in! Okay, but to me, it doesn't look like you curve inward anywhere on your body. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just curve it out everywhere. Renegade Robbie's now feeling like this. Why can't you understand? <laughs> you have a great personality. I hate to break it to you, but someone with a great personality wouldn't throw a tantrum if someone nicely told them that they weren't interested. And here's a thought. Stop shoving enormous amounts of food down your throat and become the kind of girl that the guys you find attractive find attractive. <laughs> Truly a radical idea, I know. Vanessa Ham, they should love me as is. I shouldn't have to starve myself for them. The double think is just, wow, <laughs> Claire Bear. Of course you shouldn't. Don't worry, quality guys will realize what a catch you are soon. They marry girls like you. Renegade Robbie, Claire. What is your problem, <laughs> Claire? You! Guys, you're all the same! You expect these Barbie dolls. Girls have to be perfect to even warrant your attention. Renegade Robbie, that's not true. All I'm saying is that nobody has the right to demand that others find them attractive. Vanessa, I'm telling the truth. Eat less and exercise if you want more guys to find you attractive. Vanessa Ham is a blubbering mess at this point, and Claire Bear is comforting her. This is a hell of a double date, isn't it? <laughs> Been quite a ride, hasn't it? And now we reach our dramatic conclusion. <laughs> Claire Bear, uh, I thought you were different, Robbie, but you're just the same as them. Just the same as your friends, your, your stupid, shallow friends. You expect girls to be perfect and hurt themselves so they can make you happy? <laughs> We're over, Renegade Robbie. Good. 
And just so we're clear, I obviously don't expect perfection. If I did, I would have mentioned that you need to drop about 15 pounds. <laughs> Claire Bear, you asshole! Screw you! Renegade Robbie drops the mic and walks away. Robbie, out. Well, boo-hoo, I'm so sorry your feelings are hurt, princess. Robbie then retrieves Griffy from his hiding spot and the two of them vacate the area as the girls shriek about misogyny. <laughs> On this night, I believe two new feminists were born. Cool, awesome, good for you. Feeling empowered yet? <laughs> Robbie drops Griffy off at home and apologizes profusely for the date and everything. We're all taking Griffy out once school ends to try and make up for this shit fest. Robbie comes home fuming, bangs around the house for a while, and then goes to bed. I heard none of this since I was asleep at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night because I lived that kind of fast, hard party and lifestyle, you know? I mean, you got your party use in during high school. It's fine. I got mine done during the Navy, and then I'm like, okay, that's over now. At least we didn't do it during a midlife crisis, huh? Those types of people is the worst. <laughs> Robbie told all of us this last night at dinner. Mike and I celebrated the loss of Claire Bear with Robbie. Honestly, we were very pleased to be rid of her. Yeah, she won no good. She won no good. She belongs to the streets. She wants to keep her friend fat so she can be the pretty one or the somewhat prettier one. <laughs> so there you go. There's the crazy story of Robbie's double date. Moral of the story, girls are all entitled to attractive guys, but guys are not entitled to have preferences about what they find attractive because patriarchy. Duh. Bro, come on! TLDR, Renegade Robbie is single and ready to mingle. Hell yeah, bro, let's get out there and make some more bad choices. <laughs> There's even more of these to go, but I think I'm gonna save them for a later date because they were longer than expected. So probably one more video from the Vicoverse and then it'll be done for real for real. But I hope you enjoyed this one, friends. Like, comment, subscribe if you did. Check out links in the description. Amazon affiliate, Teespring. Go rate my podcast if you haven't yet. It's on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Deezer, CastBox, <laughs> wherever you listen to podcasts. I'd appreciate it. I'd also like to thank my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members. Exclusive videos coming out for them every single week. And I really couldn't do it without them. And whether you can afford to support financially or not, I want you to know, friends, most importantly, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut them open. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be...